Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Matt here with the Toasty Bros. And this video has been a long time coming. We're gonna be figuring out, can you game on a Chromebook? Gaming on Chromebooks is not great, but there are some things you can do on it if this happens to be your school computer, which is what we hear a lot here at the Toasty Bros. Uh, but yeah, we can find a way to help you all game on it. But before we dive into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Team Group and their Delta RGB DDR5 memory, featuring blazing fast speeds up to 6400 MHz, support for Intel XMP 3.0, a built-in PMIC with a stronger cooling design, making it perfect for your next 12th gen Intel gaming PC. Also be sure to check out Team Group's website to learn more about how their products impact different industries like commercial, education, and more. Storage needs are growing and Team Group has all the products to fulfill those needs. Also, you can sign up for 10% off their products on Amazon by going to their website and filling out your email information. Special thanks again to Team Group for sponsoring today's video. Now let's get into it, shall we? So this specific model, and most of them are going to be pretty similar, is an Asus C423N that has a Celeron in it. It has four gigs of DDR4, a 32 gig storage drive that is EMMC, but EMMC has gotten a little bit better, so hopefully it's not as slow as it used to be, and a 14 inch screen. Chrome OS is very easy to run on slower hardware, so those specs really don't mean a whole lot. Um, yeah, you can get some higher end Chromebooks, but we really don't recommend it. You're really looking for ones that are like 300 bucks or less. This one coming in at around $260, We'll definitely check the link in the description down below to see the most up-to-date pricing if you're interested in one. But yeah, we're just gonna open this thing up and then show you some examples of how you can game in Chrome OS. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring you the Asus Chromebook. And look at that, it comes in a nice pretty sheath. There's actually some nicer laptops that we've gotten that don't even come in packaging this nice, which is kind of funny. But we got a nice like gray color scheme. There's some fingerprints on here because- uh, I didn't we, do anything, I swear. Yeah, we may have already put some games on and some other good good stuff. Cause uh, you know, you do have the EMMC storage and you gotta be really selective when you only have 30 gigs to work with. So underneath here we have some, you know, warranty stuff, some, some safety stuff. The stuff that we just, we just don't really look at that stuff. Now, of course, in typical Chromebook fashion, we do have this nice little brick that uh, I think is probably USB-C. Yeah, you know, a yep, nice little USB-C charger, which this thing is probably so low, so slow, so low, so low wattage that you could probably, yeah, it's 15 watts. So you could actually probably like charge this in your car using a 12 volt charger, which that's really nice. I mean, you might be on the go, you might have your mobile hotspot and you wanna, you know, do some mobile game streaming or maybe do some actual games. We're gonna see, you know, if this will actually do some, some real games aside from some game streamings. Uh, sorry if that's a spoiler, you know, to what this thing will do, but game streaming. Um, but on the right side, we have a USB 3. We have USB-C for charging and can probably also be used as uh, an interface as well. Um, we have a micro SD card, which it looks like we got one in there. Do we have one for? I stuck games? one in there, yep. All right, so what do we have, like a 128 gig? I think it's a 64. 64 gig, okay. And then, uh, you know what, I was actually wrong. This is the USB charging port, and then this one, I guess, is just for USB you know, this, expansion and whatnot. Yeah. Um, and then we have another USB 3, and we have an, a combo audio jack. Actually, a lot of ports for a Chromebook. I was not expecting this much. So I think you can also use this as a, as a display out, as long as it allows for it. It probably um, can go from like USB-C to like HDMI. You could always buy an external monitor, which we've done some videos on. But you know, pretty good looking laptop. It's actually pretty light. It has Intel inside, but don't be fooled. It is no i5. It is no i3. It is a Celeron. Now, do you remember off the top of your head, is this a two core, two thread? Uh, it's basically, it's just a dual core. Just a dual core. Okay. Yeah. And it's, it's magical. That's me. Who's I mean, that guy? Not, not, we haven't touched this yet though, guys. We just got it. Um, haven't it ready put anything for me. on it. Yeah, no, it's just ready to go. But it does have a webcam. It does have speakers built in. It does have a microphone built in. So you could also use this for conferencing and whatnot. So, you know, for anywhere from like 180 to 260 bucks, this is brand new and it does have a warranty. That's one thing for 180 to 260 bucks, you really can't go any cheaper. I mean, you're going to have to get something used that's not gonna be running Chrome OS. Um, and is that really worth it? Eh, it kind of depends, but we might be finding out today that Chromebooks are more worth it than you think. So we're gonna go and test it in a couple gaming um, applications. We're going to be doing game streaming, which Jackson spoiled, uh, GeForce Now. Um, and then we're also going to be doing some native Android apps because you have access to the Google Play Store on these uh, Chromebooks to download anything from the Google Play Store. And then we're going to show you some emulation that you can get from the Google Play Store. So yeah, let's just go ahead and do that because that's what you can do on Chromebooks. 
All right, guys, we are now in GeForce Now playing Fortnite on this Chromebook. For those who don't know what GeForce Now is, it's basically a game streaming service that allows you to play games over the cloud. So there's a computer somewhere off in the distance that's doing all the hard work and you're just getting a video signal sent to you. Uh, GeForce Now is a really good service for low end laptops because all they have to do is play back the video. Only issue is there is definitely some latency. Uh, playing esports titles like Fortnite is not the greatest if you're trying to be really competitive. As you can uh, tell, my hands right now, they're really struggling. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of latency that makes it really hard for you to hit your shots and everything. But if you're playing single player games and you can connect your Steam library, you will have a much better gaming experience. So I'm trying my best right now to ignore the latency that's going on, but you know, it's just it's just kind of hard in games like Fortnite, um, other esports titles, you're just not gonna have the best experience. <laughs> but I mean, hey, look at me. I'm, I'm gonna kill this tomato head. Oh, I'm not, this tomato head's gonna kill me, isn't he? Oh man, that just happened. Wow, that was so disappointing. But uh, yeah, Fortnite, GeForce Now, it works. Maybe we'll try another game in GeForce Now and uh, you know, my hands will work a little better. <laughs> All right, guys, we are now in Rocket League on GeForce Now. This game is definitely competitive, but I feel like this would be a much better game to play on GeForce Now compared to something like Fortnite or any sort of shooter. Um, so yeah, definitely playing this as an option is uh, a good one, so. Yeah, there is still definitely latency. It does not feel as good as playing natively, and the guy just left the game. He's just scared of my ability and just left the game. Clearly, that's what's going on here. All right, now we have a new opponent and this guy probably is about to just score on me. But yeah, GeForce Now, there's a lot of different single player games that probably would be more ideal for GeForce Now. Again, all you have to do is link your Steam account or whatever other game account that is supported at the time. Um, so single player games, I think you'll have a lot of fun and not have really much problems at all with the latency. Yes! All right, I scored a goal, that's all I wanted. It was a struggle, but I scored a goal. That's all that really matters. Let's go ahead and try some stuff that runs natively on this Chromebook, and that's some emulation. All right, guys, the next thing we have is a Game Boy Advanced emulator. Now, we are running the free GBA emulator that you can get from the Play Store. Do keep in mind, as I mentioned, you can get a bunch of different apps from the Play Store, a bunch of emulators. You can actually install RetroArch, which I did try to install, but I was experiencing an issue where if I tried to add a core, the core says it failed to install it. I had no idea how to fix it, and wanted to get this video on the timely manner. So if you guys have any like suggestions on what's up with that, let me know down below. But there's a bunch of games that run natively on Android for like Android phones or tablets or things like that, that would work really well on this. So if you haven't looked in the Android app store, definitely consider doing that. But installing this emulator, very simple. All you have to do is install the emulator, download the ROMs from the website, and then load them up into your Chromebook. Once again, if you want to legally do this, you need to be owning the physical copies of these games. But again, just got to mention that. Um, so we're going to load up Super Mario Advance 4 just to show you it works. And we're actually using this Game Boy controller. Just USB Game Boy controller, and it just works right out the gate. But yeah, it just works. It just works. Plug and play, it auto detects this controller and just got automatically maps the controls. Same thing for any other USB controller. You can use a Bluetooth controller as well to allow this to work. So we're just gonna dive into Mario and show you how well it performs. Now, yeah, obviously these are older games, they're easy to run, but it's just cool that you can actually use this really cheap laptop. And there really aren't many limitations when it comes to emulation. With RetroArch, you can do PSP, PlayStation, a bunch of different stuff. You just got to be able to, well, configure it right. And obviously I'm a noob when it comes to emulation. So I was really struggling to configure it properly, but this Game Boy one just gives you a good example of what you can do. And uh, my next game that I'll show you is another example of what I really like about this. And that is playing Pokemon games. So we'll go ahead and close this out real quick to show you that, yep, you can play Mario, close that. And the other uh, Game Boy Advance game that's definitely really fun to play is some Pokemon on the go. I think I could actually load my save that I already had. Yeah, let's load this re real quick. Oh, there we go. All right, we're in and we're actually running at 60 FPS. It's a good little refresh on a game that was running at like 30 FPS on the Game Boy Advance. But yeah, 60 Pokemon, you can run through these games and they work perfectly. If you guys haven't played any of the older Pokemon games, this is a great way to play it. Um, and it's just kind of fun, you know? It's something a little bit different. Um, I know emulation isn't technically PC gaming, but if you have one of these little machines, you can do some sort of gaming on it. It's not completely useless and not totally just destined to be a school or office PC, because I know a lot of you at home who are watching probably got one of these from their school and you're limited on what you can do with it at home. But hey, look at that. Emulation through the Android App Store. It works. You can play games like Pokemon. 
Now, the last thing I'm gonna show you guys is Bloom Tower Defense 6, which is a native Android game. Again, Android apps, mobile games, you could run perfectly fine on a Chromebook. So if you're looking for an all around great solution for school, office, things like that, and you wanna be able to load up apps from the Android store, whether it's balloons, whether it's emulation, whether it's game streaming, these things are more cable than people make them out to be. Yes, they are a little bit cheaper. They use some cheaper build quality, but for someone's first laptop, if you're shopping for your kid, you cannot go wrong with these Chromebooks really, especially if you can find them on promos for under $200, which they do regularly appear at that price. But yeah, here we go, running balloons, working great. There is a little bit of lag that I'm noticing, but it's not anything too bad. I wouldn't want to go super hardcore with this game and get super in-game like we do here at the office where we get to ram like 100 plus and it just absolutely bogs things down. But this is a fun tower defense game that you can play with your friends, um, have a good time, and it works on your Chromebooks. So I'm not saying that you should just be playing this while you're in school or anything, but as long as your school internet hasn't blocked it, you definitely got this option to play on your Chromebooks. So yeah, overall, I think Chromebooks are well worth it in the market. They have a place in the market. Schools definitely benefit from them because of their cost and ease of setting up using Google accounts and all the different Google educational ecosystems out there that make these things really good. And uh, as an average consumer, it could be a good option for you if you don't want to spend a lot of money and don't want to get a really crappy Windows laptop that's not going to be very optimized. So yeah, that's benchmarking on a Chromebook. Let's wrap this video up real quick. All right, guys, so we just got done benchmarking this little Chromebook here, and the conclusion is probably what you thought. It'll do game streaming services really well, just about as well as anything else will do in really any price range. And obviously, there are a lot of apps that are on the Android market. Of course, pretty much any of the apps in there, they're going to be fine on this because they're really designed to run on some pretty dumbed down devices. Now, when it comes to like standalone games, if you actually have enough storage for it, you know, like with your SD card or something like that, I mean, there's there's some standalone games that you can play, but we're talking like Balloon Tower Defense style games, like very low end games. So you're not gonna be playing any uh, AAA titles and probably not really even any esports titles. So if you're considering picking up a Chromebook for whatever reason you might want a Chromebook, link in the description down, there'll be a few links and they will help us out. And let me know if there's anything else you have done on your Chromebook that's cool. And uh, if you've done any modifications or stuff, or if you have one of these that you use at school, let me know down below. So as always, we hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toastybros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out. Goodbye. And hey, if you don't want to have to go with the Chromebook, you know, because uh, they're they're pretty cheap, but we got maybe some cheaper stuff over at our PC selling business. PCBros.tech is where we sell gaming PCs, laptops, and cheap laptops that you can get if you're wanting to get into it and not have to deal with the Chromebook and Chrome OS. So check out our website, PCBros.tech, or come in person. See you guys later. Goodbye.